Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Trinity United Methodist, where we are loving one another to Christ. We're so happy you're here this morning. Had a good last week. I'll share with you that the men's breakfast was yesterday, uh, in January, or let's see, February. We had five people show up, and yesterday we had 11. And so we're pretty tickled. And all we did was laugh. So it was a great morning. It's just what we needed. You weren't here this morning for the 845, but we celebrated Sharon Harris's birthday today. So please, when you see her, give her a hug. Uh, she embodies loving one another to Christ. And well, there you go. There's another chance to sing happy birthday. I do want to mention this morning that uh, we have a, uh, a new way uh, to help around here. If you've noticed lately, we've had a nice uh, spray of flowers up front. And uh, David Washington and his wife, Nicole, have a uh, florist. And they have agreed that... Uh, for $25, you can have fresh flowers put into the sanctuary every Sunday, and the calendar is out on the wall, and Joyce Robinson has got this lined up, and just write your name on there for the week you want and who you want to honor or in memory of, and it'll be a $25 donation, and at the end of the 11 o'clock service, you can take those home and put them on your dining room table or take them to the nursing home, whatever you want to do. But it's just one more way to say thank you, good Lord, and beautify this. Oh, there's our birthday girl. Don't say anything. It was supposed to be a surprise. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Shay. also in need constantly of volunteers. We've got Vacation Bible School on a weekly basis. We need ushers and greeters. Um, there are a lot of things that we could use help with right now. And let, let me say this too, that as I look around, most of you already have two or three jobs. And uh, it's a blessing that you do. And uh, so as we all go through the next few months, let's just remember to encourage each other and, and have a little patience if we forget which meeting we're in when we, ha we make a, a comment. So um, I, I would also like to say that um, I see Ken back there, and I'd like to give him a shout out. You know, the, he was SPR chair as we finished out the year and, and you know the church was going through so many different things and um, a great job and I appreciate it. I, rem I sat through one meeting <laughs> did a wonderful job leading us through that time and let me shout out one more because Donna has been leading SPR since January and of course, there's been a, more changes happen. And she's done an incredible job. What, what a leader, what a wise lady. And we're so blessed that she's here to go from Ken to Donna. If you will note, you have an insert this morning that's got all the uh, listing of the new leadership that was elected a week ago last Monday, if I remember correctly. Um, we need your prayers. We need your support. But these are the, the folks that if you need something and you don't know who to go ask, just grab one on that list because we're all here to help. And we are honored and thankful for your allowing us this opportunity to serve this church. 
Nellie and Abby Schmidt this morning. Yay! Welcome, welcome. Thank you. I, they, they snuck in. Yes. No, no, that's great. I'm trying to think if I've missed anything. Are there any other announcements? Hey, this is the way it should be. This is the way families do. Well, let me open this up this morning with prayer. Father God, we just praise your name. And we ask that your will be done. Lord, there's so many good things going on here. And you've given us so many opportunities to serve you. And we're excited. There's a new spirit here. There's a new drive. Lord, we just thank you in this season that you've given us this opportunity and you shine your grace on us. There's so many troubles in this world, so many troubles in our personal lives, so many troubles at work. But when we come here and you wrap your arms around us, we know we're safe. Lord, we ask you to be with us this morning. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we entered into this you know, sacred space today, we had one purpose in mind. And one purpose was to come and spend an hour communing with the Lord. And as our presence is here, his presence is here, and we came to worship and the choir's going to call us to worship by saying, that's what we came here for. <laughs>
is our affirmation of faith, Psalm 51. And you'll notice it is on the banner over here. Uh, I have no idea who made it, but I love it. And if you know who made it, let me know. Wow. Well, there you go. So let's say this Lenten time of Scripture. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before you, against you and you alone. Have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight? So you are right in your verdict. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within. That uh, verse 10, and the banner over there says, Create in me a clean heart. Some say a pure heart. Either way, let that be your Lenten prayer. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Uh, if everyone be seated, and I invite uh, this week's ushers to come down front. Oh, just kidding. No. Did I miss something? <laughs> Special music and then the offering. Sorry, guys. a sweet, sweet spirit in this place, and I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. There are sweet expressions on each face and I know 
you feel the presence of the Lord. Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove, stay right here with us, filling us with your love and for these blessings we lift our hearts in praise without a doubt we'll know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove, stay right here with us, filling us with your love, and for these blessings we our hearts in praise without a doubt we'll know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place Amen. Now the ushers come forward. All right, Lee, there you go. Perfect. All right, let's have a prayer over our offering. God, thank you for the sweet, sweet spirit in this place. Thank you for everyone gathered here. Let this be a time that we worship you. Amen.
As we go to God in prayer, I have one prayer request update. Marianne Crocker is now in uh, rehab. Poor thing, she, uh, her legs are just giving her all kinds of problems, so please continue to pray for her. There's very limited visitors, mainly family, so uh, the great thing about being a Christian is that we can pray for the person even if we can't go see them. So join me in prayer. God, create in us a clean heart and renew a steadfast spirit within us. God, create in us a clean soul and renew our spirit. God, clean our brains and Holy Spirit, come and dwell among us. God, not our will, but yours. Not our will, but yours. God, we seek you today. Help us not to worry about anything, but seek you through prayer, through Bible study, through times of worship, and so much more. So we can more deeply follow you day after day. Holy Spirit, reign in our lives. Plant in us, shape and fashion us in your likeness so that the light of Christ might be seen in us today. God, we especially lift up sweet Mary Ann. Continue for her legs to recover so then she can get back here to worshiping you. We thank you, God, that even when we're scattered, we can worship you. God, I pray for everyone gathered here that they may know your extravagant grace and that they feel your love and your loving presence every day. And now we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us out of temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We're reading this morning from the book of John, third chapter, first 17 verses. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miracle, miraculous signs that you have done if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he's old, Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. And Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he's born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying. You must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the spirit. How can this be, Nicodemus said? You are an Israel teacher. And do you not understand these things? I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know, 
We testify to what we've seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you about earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who has come from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. The word of God for the people of God. God. Shout out to so many of you. Well, first of all, thanks for being here. So this is kind of funny. I don't know what it is, but like, it seems like this section over here is always the most crowded. So if you're like, I can't see, there's some other sections. Um, Big shout out. Okay, so this is like a non-scientific thing. But I am guessing that the number of diapers that are over in this section over here would last a child till they're potty trained, which is really amazing. So shout out to all of you who donated Uh, We are about to do our pie raffle. We did uh, three pies at that first service. And you, um, there's either caramel pies or Josie Hickam made uh, buttermilk pie. They're buttermilk, right? They are, y'all, they are good. The buttermilk pies are better than mine. Uh, So Joyce Robinson won, Dan Casey, and Carol Nelson. You do not have to be present to win. Um, and so since there's no monetary value, I get to make up the rules, like, you know, as I go, right? (laughs) And so, um, basically, uh, Carol Nelson won technically three pies at the first service. I kept drawing your name, but you only get, you only win one pie. So, uh, but if you donated more than one, then you have an increased chance of winning. So I've got three more to pull out. Let's see, the first one is Kevin Lester. Kevin, Kevin, okay, Kevin came to the first service and then sang in the choir and then left. So Kevin and Sandy Adams. Sandy over there. And one more. John Raines. You won. So my pies have to be in the freezer. Josie's do not. So these are our winners. And but the true winner are the babies in Bartow County that get all these diapers, right? What a wonderful blessing. Uh, that's a lot, right? And it's a lot of different sizes. And there is some wipes and some formula in there uh, as well. Thankfully, it seems like the formula shortage is sort of going away, which is a big answer to prayer. Uh, Just so you know, uh, next week, our church after uh, worship is going to be hosting about 70 pastors that are doing a clergy ethics training. So every four years, pastors that are United Methodists have to go through training. And uh, so it covers the basics of what we're not supposed to do, right? And each year they add on more and more and more. And so uh, we get trained. And so after the service, I'm going to need some help because we are going to have to set up, I think, eight tables in here with some chairs around them. So I would really appreciate your help. And uh, you might see some pastors that you're like, hey, I kind of recognize you. We'll see what time everybody shows up. I, um, like, they have added something to the training recently. For example, uh, about how clergy are supposed to date, right? And so uh, when I first... uh, entered ministry, I was single, and obviously I'm happily married now, and so it's kind of interesting to see what all they add every year. So I have found
found that it's easy to talk about kids not making good choices, right? But sometimes it's harder to talk about adults making bad choices. So growing up, uh, the neighbor that lived across the street was my age. Her name uh, is Carol, and we used to play all the time. And Carol's dad was doing some kind of work at their house. And it, he was caulking, doing something. And he was like, you girls have a great time playing. I'm over here working on this. But just do not step in this caulk that is drying. Okay, we had one rule, right? Okay, there was obviously other rules like don't, you know, play in the street and, you know, don't set the house on fire. But the other rule, do not step in the caulk. So what did I do? Step in the caulk. No, my whole foot, probably both of my feet. So I did not realize in my seven-year-old brain or however old I was that it wasn't just easily, you know, you just wipe it off and that was it. It was a sticky mess. So in my brain, I decided that I should go home, lay under the covers and pretend like everything was fine. So my parents knew that something was going on because I was covered up, lights off, taking a nap in the afternoon. Well, you can imagine how it went on, right? My parents saw me. They went over. I got in trouble. Thankfully, it came off. It wasn't a big deal. But I didn't make a good choice, right? And God has choices, or God has uh, a book to talk about, the book, about choices that we should and shouldn't make. And God's like, here is the line, right? And so many times we push the boundaries, right? Like, here is the line, and I'm not going to go over the line. Okay, I'm going to put one foot over the line, And then you know how it goes when you put one foot over the line, just a little bit, oh, then I'm going to do another, and then I'm going to be completely over. But really, God says, here's the line. Okay, think about a football stadium, right? You have the 50-yard line, the center, right? And let's say going over to the 51st-yard line on the other side is not where you're supposed to go. But God doesn't want us to just stay on the 49th yard. God wants us to stay in the end zone, right? Way far away from the choice we're not supposed to make. Not tiptoe up to the line, not go a little closer, but way back in the end zone. Way back. Today, we're looking at John 3.16. And we make not the best choices, but God's grace covers those. Martin Luther, so you probably know the name Martin Luther, right? He started the Protestant Reformation. He didn't like what the Catholic Church was doing. And one of the big things was how they dealt with sin and grace. And Martin Luther said that John 3.16 is like the gospel in a nutshell. I love that, right? If you were to take the Bible, all, you know, hundreds, maybe thousands of pages, you whittle it down to John 3.16. The gospel in a nutshell. It is one of the most famous Bible verses, right? Right? You got John 3, 16. You got Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. Uh, You also have uh, the one from Philippians, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And then uh, Jeremiah, for I know the plans that God has for me. Those are like, if you look, the top four Bible verses. The gospel in a nutshell. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world and you, you are part of that world. And God vision 
or God visions you part of that world. When God sent his son, not to perish, but have everlasting life. And here's this crazy thing about grace. It's for all of us. And grace isn't fair unless you're the one that needs it, which newsflash, we all need it. But here's the kind of thing that's a little bit like a dagger in our heart. We all need it. The people that are choosing to, thinking about the football analogy, the people that are choosing to be in the end zone way far away from the line, the people at the line, the people over the line. And and here's the thing, God's grace was even there for Hitler. That's hard, right? And it doesn't seem fair for the people that are living in God's grace and love and God's law that are going to worship, that are trying, that God's grace is still there. So I worked at an orphanage and there were kids living on streets in Africa at that time. Africa has since um, done a lot of work. Uh, a lot of countries have done a lot of work with our version of DFACS, right? And which is wonderful and awesome. And they're doing, uh, or at least the country that I was living in, Zambia, is doing foster care now. And they really are trying to get these kids off the street. And in 2010, I spent the summer there and we got these two sweet five, six-year-olds and they were twins, Mary and Joseph, and they were living on the street And we got him, and I was helping Joseph uh, get ready to go to bed. And I have never seen a child more happy, more joyful in my life about going to bed because for the first time in his little life, he had a bed to sleep on. And he had sheets and jammies, and he wasn't sleeping in dirty clothes. And then when I got back, I read this story several years later, and it was like, oh, man, that's kind of what I experienced. So this kid grew up living on the streets. He was probably five or six years old. This was many years ago, and it was a blizzard. So probably not Atlanta, but, you know, D.C., New York City, Toronto, Chicago, some major city. And he went up to a police officer and was like, help me find a place to sleep tonight. And the police officer said, I want you to walk down, you know, go this way, told him directions, and said, I want you to look for a sign that says John 3.16. So the kid does, and he's like, John 3.16, what does that mean? The kid knocks on the door and is like, are you John 3.16? kid couldn't really read but could see the the numbers right 316 and he gets let in it's warm it's cozy it's inviting he has a bath right new jammies a bed to sleep in a hot meal and John 316 that night the kid asked so are you John 316 who's John What is 316? And that kid got the greatest gift that night. Love, a place to sleep, and learning about God's grace. And here's the thing about John 316. There, it's the gospel in a nutshell, but I want us to look at all of the chapter of John which Dan read for us today. So it takes a man named Nicodemus, who is a member of the Sanhedrin, which is basically like our Supreme Court. And unlike now where we have separation of church and state, the Jewish leaders at that time had a lot more authority And they were in charge of making sure that people were living out their Jewish laws and their customs, and they acted kind of like a spiritual judge. 
So picture one of our Supreme Court justices. And that is how high up Nicodemus was, right? You can't get anything higher than the Supreme Court, right? The Supreme Court has so much power in America. And the Sanhedrin did at that time. And Nicodemus goes to Jesus at night, which I find that really kind of fascinating at night. Some people think, oh, it was just a scheduling problem. Nicodemus was really busy or he was embarrassed to go talk to Jesus, didn't really want to be associated with Jesus. But I'm wondering if Nicodemus was tossing and turning in his bed, had been hearing about Jesus, and heard about Jesus preaching the good news, about Jesus talking about salvation, of Jesus preaching and teaching and performing miracles. And Nicodemus is tossing and turning and wondering. And then we see Nicodemus go to Jesus. It's dark. And Nicodemus and Jesus have this exchange, right? Where Jesus is saying, you need to be born of water and the spirit. You need to be born again, be born anew. And Nicodemus is trying to think, okay, how, how, how does this make sense? I like it. Nicodemus asks this really faithful question. How is this possible? How is this possible? How is it possible How can we be born anew? And then the answer to that question is John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And Nicodemus gets to hear the gospel in a nutshell gets to hear Jesus declare this amazing news that Jesus is the good news, the Messiah. And then the gospel goes on, and we don't hear a lot about Nicodemus. And Then we see Nicodemus in John chapter 4, which was just about his job in the Sanhedrin. And then we see Nicodemus again. And I want to show you all, um, this is a concordance. And what it is, is all of the major words and people in the Bible, you can see where they are listed. And so, just I randomly opened up a page, and the word price. Anytime the word price is listed, and pride, and priest, oh, lots of priest and priestesses, and priesthood, and prince, and prisoner. And so I looked up Nicodemus. Where else is Nicodemus found? And so you find it in here, and then you look it up. And the other time that Nicodemus is with Jesus, is at the cross. So Nicodemus hears the promise of the gospel, hears about Jesus being God's only wonderful son, the lamb of God, for God so loved the world. And then Nicodemus, and if you have your Bible, I want you to open it. And if you have it on your phone, you can open it too. So this is in John 19. Uh, Well, you're gonna start at verse 38. John 19, verse 38. Later, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now, Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because he feared the Jews. With Pilate's permission, he came and took the body away. He was accompanied by Nicodemus. 
the man who had early, earlier visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about uh, 75 pounds. Taking the body, the two, which includes Nicodemus, wrapped Jesus with spices and strips of linen that was in accordance with the Jewish burial customs. At that place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and the garden a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid, because it was also because it was the Jewish holiday of preparation. Since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. So it doesn't say if Nicodemus was at the cross before Jesus died. Doesn't say, but Nicodemus is there after the death. And Nicodemus takes the body of our Lord and Savior and wraps him in cloth, linen, and is one of the two that puts him in that tomb. Nicodemus got to hear the gospel in a nutshell, got to ask Jesus, how is this possible? How is this possible to be born again, be in born anew, be born of water and the Spirit. Nicodemus got to hear that and then see it lived out. We don't know if Nicodemus got to see Jesus, you know, feed the 5,000 or preach the Beatitudes or uh, see some of the miracles. We don't know. Perhaps when you go to heaven and you meet Nicodemus, you can say, What did you see between this, between asking how is this possible and the death of Jesus? And Nicodemus got to see our Lord and Savior, the body and the blood of Christ, broken and shed for you. The gospel lived out. That this is a symbol of John 3.16. That this is a time to remember the sacrifice in love. And say with me right now, John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Thanks be to God. For that. In just a minute, uh, we're going to go through the Holy Communion liturgy. Just a few uh, things about communion. You don't have to be a member of this church or the United Methodist Church to come and partake in Holy Communion. Uh, we have gluten free elements if you need those, and also the pre prepackaged little ones if you would prefer those as well. When you come up, if you will take your hands, and place them in the sign of a cross as we remember the sacrifice of Jesus. Uh, I think that's all, and the ushers will show you where to go. And if you would like to receive Holy Communion in your seat, just let the ushers know, and then one of us will come and serve you. Uh, Join me. Uh, I'll say the first part, and then we'll go from there. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, He took bread, broke the bread, and said, this is my body which has been broken and given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper is over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it and remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice and union with Christ offering for us. As we proclaim the mystery of faith, and I'll say this is like the gospel in a nutshell as well. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And as you know, I love praying and invoking the Holy Spirit. So let's all pray the last part together. 
Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. I invite our communion helpers and ushers uh, to get in place. Uh, and in, in just a minute, uh, you will be invited to come forward.
invite you now as you're able to please stand as we sing our final closing hymn. FLC in the FLC, which is a fancy way to say, come and eat some good food. So if you're like, I didn't bring anything, trust me, there is plenty of food. Uh, so as soon as we are done, head that way. And hey, I got to, this is just kind of random, but I was so impressed in kids Sunday school this morning, Lee Pratt, who was the acolyte, he knows more about the Bible than just about anybody here. So shout out to Lee in the back. He knows the Bible. Woohoo, Lee! Uh, your parents should be very impressed with you, Lee. Good job. Uh, this week, as we journey closer to the cross with Easter, let's think about the sacrifice, the love that God sent his only son for us. Go in peace.